For now, though, families of two mentally ill men killed by guns are going public. They say the system failed their loved ones. He shouldn't have gotten that gun. There was issues. But somebody still allowed him to have a gun, and nobody called me. So why and how are high-risk people with mental illness getting their hands on guns legally? Rosa Marcatelli has this Go Public investigation. Adrian Clavier of Prince Albert, Saskatchewan, killed himself two years ago with a handgun he was legally allowed to own. He had a long history of mental health issues and was on heavy medication that could have increased his risk of suicidal thoughts. He disclosed all of that on his gun license application, yet no one followed up with his doctor to see if Clavier should have a gun. In most provinces, it's not required as part of the screening process. I think it's unconscionable that there has to be some respect for the fact that mental health care providers are there. Clavier's family wants answers to how someone with a long, well-documented history of mental illness could continue to have legal and ready access to guns. We're very smug about being Canadian and, and the gun control that we have. But it's still completely ignorant of the fact that the there are some people who just shouldn't have handguns. So it was right about here that um, Corey was shot. Nadine Lewis is still asking questions about how her husband was able to get five firearms despite his history of mental illness and violence. Corey Lewis was fatally shot by police outside his home after officers responded to a domestic dispute call and found him in a bedroom holding a rifle. A note was found saying it was Lewis's intent to die by what's known as suicide by cop. The Vitality Inquiry found some really disturbing stuff, as you know. You know, for example, when your husband applied for these gun licenses, uh, he self-disclosed that he'd been the subject of a peace bond. Uh, he said that uh, yes to the fact that uh, he'd threatened or attempted suicide. This is shocking stuff. It's frustrating stuff. And um, he still got the gun license. And he still got the gun. Families with similar stories went public late last year, asking why the Liberal government has failed to deliver on gun control legislation it promised during the 2015 election. We asked the government if those changes include mandatory medical checks for people with mental illness, but didn't get an answer. Suicide prevention experts say limiting access to guns will reduce the number of suicides. Right now, more than 260 people kill themselves every year using a firearm. Research shows us that, contrary to common uh, beliefs, when access is restricted, people don't go and choose a different means. Not everyone wants tighter rules. Gun advocates say it would only discriminate against gun owners. Rosa Marcatelli, CBC News, Calgary.